Good people, what to do, what it is. You know what time it is. Turn the volumes up now. I'm on the road, the road warrior himself, Rick Blaze. And of course, I'm joined by my good brother, Siege. This is Blazing Takes. It's Friday Eve. Siege, how we doing today? I'm excited for Friday's Eve, one of my favorite days of the week. Um, and we got, we, got some, we got some stuff for you guys today, so I'll jump What's us up? right into it. Rick, let's talk about that tweet earlier today. We've talked about him before. Yeah. Let's talk about Walk DMV. Um, yeah, absolutely. Walk, walk me, walk me through your thoughts when you were tweeting that, and, and expand <laughs> on it a little bit. So I'm gonna walk you through Walk DMV. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing: they lose Nick Hugo, which was the heart and soul of their team. Um, they have recruiting options available like everyone else. And their their region was a really good region. There was a lot of good talent come out of their region. And I'm expecting now you don't have to go get a Nick Hugo type, but I'm expecting you get someone to say, you know what, going into this season, this is gonna be my guy, or this is gonna be the guy, this is gonna be one of the guys. I'm expecting to make a if you're gonna let Hugo walk, I have to assume you have something planned. For reason why you're letting Hugo out, yeah. I, so yeah, I mean that that just went call it crazy. But if you're gonna let a big a big dog walk, I'm assuming because you got a big dog coming in, <laughs> or else you don't let the big dog walk. <laughs> like you enough. offer him the sun, the moon, the stars. You get his parents a brand new uh, bike, his daughter a bike. Whatever you need to do to keep the big man there. Well, so you know. I'm seeing what's going on, and as a result, Walk DMV came out with arguably the best uh, 24 hour fitness lineup I've ever seen in history. Look, I I get it, and I know that that tweet was a reaction because of the the term you use, make a splash. There's no splashes to be made. Um, to the headline about is Nick Beal can he be the number one? Well, here's my thing: no. And if Nick Beal's the number one, look, great player, talented player. Uh, he's not a number one. He's not a main guy. Great role player. Um, Cam Jones, great role player. Here's my thing. We're focusing on the wrong guys as potential leaders for this team. We're focusing on the role guys, maybe the third, fourth guys. For me, if, if walk DMV, as you call them, is going to be at the very least jog DMV, maybe <laughs> run DMV, it, it sits on one guy who has the potential to be the number one, maybe two. But this other guy, I think, is also more of a role player, but a versatile one. But VJ George coming back, if they can unlock his full potential, if Coach Banks can use him properly and make him play at his full potential, that's the only way they get past the walk DMV allegations. He has to be the number one, and potentially John Hudgens. Now, we're talking two 6'9", 6'10", forwards who can do a lot on the court, can handle, can, can shoot. Um, but if, if they don't get John Hudgens to play at an elevated level, and if they don't get VJ George up to his potential, then that's where the issue lies. If Nick Beal and if Nick Beal has to be the number one total guy, now he may be the leading scorer, but that doesn't necessarily always mean you're the number one guy, in my opinion. Um, it's those guys who have to be the number one. One of them, for me, it's probably VJ George if they are going to be anything good this year. So that's kind of my thoughts on the whole thing. I think we're focusing on the wrong yeah. guy. For their potential number yeah, one. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the whole team was full of number two and three options. VJ George has played on seventeen teams in one season. Oh yeah. So I, I, I so the fact that you we trying to see what VJ George got. I don't think VJ George got is like a, is a lot of freaking flyer miles at this point. Oh. He has more freaking flyer miles than points in a season at this point. Well, that's, that's kind of uh, what I'm thinking. Don't... If if a coach can figure yeah. out a way to get him to play to his full potential, he's gonna be it. He's gonna be a beast. He's gonna be an animal. He's got all the tools, oh, yeah. but for some reason, nobody in those you know, as you say, seventeen teams, no coach has been able to unlock that in him. So, is it possible? I don't know. But if Coach Banks can do it, that's where the success might come. Or even VJ George was a late a late signing, so he wasn't in your he wasn't in your plans. Is my point. You late, just signed late, late DJ George. Signing, early right? signing, what matters is what you end up with when the season starts. That's that's the way I see it. Okay. And it, you, uh, John, uh, Raniel is really big on John Hudgens. Uh, I think he's okay. He's a Christian Wood type cunt for me, which is not a bad. That, that's great. Which is Christian not a bad. Wood's a talented that's player. Not, he's not, but 
Christian Wood is not a number one. You know, he's not. No. When no. you think of number one options, Christian Wood don't come to mind. No, and I'm, I'm not. And, let me, and I, let me I, say. I don't think John Hudgens is going to be the number one. I don't think that's. If he's the number one, I think that's also an issue, especially if his ceiling is Christian Wood. Um, but I, I do like what John Hudgens brings to the table in terms of what he could be developed into. And again, it comes down to coaching. What can Coach Banks do with what he has? Hello. I, all, all I'm saying is you let the big dog go. Uh, and this is what you end up left with as a result. It, tells, it looks like an L. We'll see. It yeah, looks like an L. We'll, we'll see. We'll walk on down to to their games we'll, and we'll find out. That's what we'll do. Yeah, we'll walk. We'll walk. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll walk see. on down to the games and we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Coach <right>. Mary, <laughs> that bet is allowed, baby. I got I want my money. <laughs> Coach Mary must go, must go help coach assist. So anyway, moving on next time. All right, Vic, here's what I got for you today. We're going to talk about, you know, we did a way too early segment, you know, before. I don't think it's way too early for this because players are what they are. Most of the players who are in contention for, for this award are already on the teams yeah. that they're going to be on. Uh, but let's talk about our very early picks for player of the year. But there's a way I want to do this, Rick. Mm. We're each going to pick three, but we're going to go one by one because okay. each one of our picks fits into a different category. So we're going to start okay. off with our first pick. Give me... Your pick for player of the year that if you had to throw a, a rack on it right now, he is the favorite, you know, no no question, he's the guy, this is your official pick, who's winning player of the year? If I had to throw a rack a stack on it right now, yep. first of all, before I give my answer, I want to just lay out a few parameters. Player of the year to me does not always mean the best player in the league. It does not. Player of the year to me means – you provide first of all your first of all the credentials the qualifications for me your team has to be playing above 500 basketball step no. one if your team is not playing above 500 basketball don't come to me with no player to your talk step t- number two you have to ma- you have to be the uh not necessarily the focal point but your overall game has to affect the team in a way that they are not the same at all if you're not on the court. Agreed, agreed. If you take I'll, this player away, it, it hurts this, the team more team than is, anyone else. Yes, agreed. Correct. I believe last year, uh, Bronny made up about, I did the math, I think like 27% of his team overall, of his team overall success. So whenever he's not on the court, 27% of the overall success yep. of the team is gone. Yep. That Those are guys who qualify for the year. So if I had to put a stat on somebody right now, Player of the year, Jafet Towns. Ah, uh, Rick, you took you my pick too, stuff. but that's why well, you he's make, the undecided you tell, you tell one. Me first. It, it makes sense <laughs> that we agree on this pick because I won. I think he will lead the rating trades to playing good basketball. I think they'll be over 500. I think he will ball out. I think he's going to be better than he was last year. So I, I agree with you there, but it makes sense that we have the same pick for this one because this is our unquestionable. This is the favorite. So I'm, I'm there with you on Jafet. Um, Option two, pick two. Give me a guy that kind of a warm take, you know, like we've already given our favorite, but this is another guy who you think could win it. He's in the conversation, um, but he's not the favorite. So kind of a warm take, but not okay. anything crazy. Well, I, I, I didn't know we was going that way. Yep. I didn't know we was going that way. So if we're going that way, uh, my kind of warm favorite is Jafet Towns. Okay. And I say that because I don't think – I think his team may struggle of being above 500 consistently. Okay. So we're, we're switching picks. So then if Jafet Towns is your pick for your, your kind of warm take, who who is your pick, your favorite, who is going to win the award? I should have phrased All it right. like that. Who is going to Here win we the go. award? Here we go. And this gonna, I know we're not going to agree on this person, but that's fine because I'm shocking the world with my takes. There's no safe takes, baby. Kasim Porter Jr., for your, that's who is going to win it? Kasim Porter Wait. Jr. You don't even know, then you don't know what the third topic is either, but all right. So that that's your favorite. That is your favorite. That is who is going to win the award. Kasim, first of all, his team is going to be above 500. I ain't got to worry about that. Secondly, between his points and his assists, I think he's going to have a vast effect on this uh, Beast of the East squad. That's just how I feel about it. So that that, is your, that is your favorite Porter, best betting Jr. odds is Kasim Porter. Kasim Porter. <laughs> if you, so, 
again, now I, I did, guys, who listening, I didn't know the caveats he was going to put. I had three players in mind. I didn't know the caveats, the categories in which he was going to say it, but I guess everybody got to fit in some category. But my three guys, I'm not going to say three, I'm just going to say two, Jafet Towns, Kasim Porter Jr., and then I'll let you give your second, I give my third. All right, well, my favorite, who I think wins the award, is Jafet. My kind of warm take, uh, but not crazy at all, is – is Arthur Lattimore. I think he's obviously in the conversation, um, but I, I don't think he gets it over Jafet. And so let's let's move on to the third, Rick. And I think when I say this one, you're going you're gonna to put together where all three of your guys go. Give me your blazing take, dark horse, who isn't in the conversation for most people, but you think could win it if things go right. Okay, here we go. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready for this. Justin Bell. Okay. okay. Justin Mother Freaking Bell. See, I this call that kind of, a warm, kind of a warm take. I don't think that's that outlandish. Okay. You want a super dark horse then? Yeah, I want I want a dark horse that's so hot, such a hot take, but that you do believe could win it, but it's such a hot take, you're going to have people in the comments calling you crazy. Okay. You ready for it? Give it to me. Corey Yams. See that's that that is that's what I'm looking for with this question. Corey Yams, All right, okay. my super dark horse player. Now he's not. He's probably let me say something. He's probably not going to win. It probably because most of the time, most of the people hate him. <laughs> yep, he he yep. makes more enemies than friends. So he's not. If it's a popularity contest, count him out. He's not winning any popularity contest. But I believe if things again, the, things have to go really well, right? I believe yep. if. H Town and Coach Bellotti gets it together, and he allows. I think. I think again, and Mark says it all the time. I think Bellotti and and Yams combo is a really good combination. Uh, kind of like I think if I was equated to actual food, uh, Bellotti be the fried chicken and Yams be the yams. So, and then the rest of the team is like green. So you got fried chicken, you got some collard greens, and Yams on the side. Man, sign me up. Right. So right. I, I I think. If they come together, and if they can play up, the whole team play up, I think a large portion of that is going to be because of the play of Corey Yams, who I think is an underrated passer, by the way, as well. So, that's my super dark horse. All right. You put me on the spot. All right. So, so for super dark horse, I will go ahead and say KPJ was one of the names that was in this one for me. For the same reasons you have him as your overall favorite to win the award, which is quite a take, but... <laughs> we'll leave it. But he was in this. He was in this category for me because I don't think people are thinking about him for Player of the Year. Um, but for right. me, the one I'm going to go with. Hear me out. Hear me out. Gotcha. Out on the West Coast, new to the team, new to the area. My super super hot dark horse is Suno Chapa. Now oh, hear me wow. out. He's going to a team okay. that is totally rebuilding. Now of the mm-hmm. signings they've got, they got some good signings. Um, he's not already the definitive he's going to be the best player, but he is the guy who has the most experience in Sim World Prep. We saw his versatility last year. We saw that when De'Aaron Cruz wasn't really playing up to the to the standard that we had set for De'Aaron Cruz, Tsuno Chapa was the guy we were talking about. I think his game mm-hmm. is going to get better. I think Coach Dominguez mm-hmm. is going to center around him a little bit more. Um, I think he's going to have the chance to facilitate you know, he drives a lot. He's a really good slasher. He's going to have a chance to facilitate more with shooters like DJ Davis and crew on the outside. Um, and I think he's going to elevate a scoring game. So I think if everything goes perfect and Suno Chapa really elevates his game like I think he will, I think we're going to find him in the conversation at the end of the year. I'm not mad at Suno. I'm not mad at that answer. When I when I put together my, my people that my dark horses, so to speak, he was in the conversation in my mind. I personally, I don't think he's going to make up that twenty something percent overall. Yeah, that's see, why. That's why to me he didn't qualify. But not yeah. because of not because of like I don't think he's going to make up that twenty something. percent I think in order to be player of the year, I think you have to make up uh, above five hundred team, and it has to be about twenty, at least twenty two percent of the team's overall success. Uh, I, in my opinion, is what I don't think he's going to make up. I think he's going to become short. I think he's going to be like that's 19, 18 percent. That's valid. That's valid. And that's why he's my no, super hot dark that. horse. That's why he's my super blazing dark horse. I like that. I, I, and that's I, why I, I can see it. Going, keep it going to be in the threads. What about Trey Hammond? Trey Hammond's not going to make a 20-something percent of a scene. You got too many players. Yep. Nas Hall. 
I can make a twenty something. See, you see what I'm saying? See, so but that was, that I'm was not saying these other KPJ guys too. I don't know if he'll. I don't know if he'll do twenty percent of B- BCs have a lot of guys with points, with points and assists. All right. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I can I see. So. I can see it. Look, no, I, no, I think so. Like I said, he was in my dark horse. He was in my dark horse category. So I'm, I'm here for it. Hey, we with it, man. So what we got here, you know, we got to do our pick and roll segment. This was a really good. That last segment was really good. I appreciate that. Make sure y'all put it in, in the chat. Cuss and discuss. Who do you think your player of the year award goes to? Again, I think about my player of the year. I don't think about who's the most popular player. I don't think about who scores the most points. I think about who affects his team the most. For me, it's percentage wise overall. Cuss and discuss. Who you think is the best player or player of the year candidate right now? But here we go. Pick and roll. It's getting cold. See, it's the winter time, and I'm not a big coffee drinker. But in the winter time, I tend to drink coffee more than 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 normal. Okay. Now. There is this place that has a cult following, and they make and they call the artists be off the chain. I'm talking about Starbucks. Yep, yep. Yeah. Cult, cult and when following. they uh, when I be behind the people in lines, they be just saying words I don't even know what they're saying. It's like they speak another language. I have no idea. And by the way, I'm still I'm never calling a small event. It's a small. Don't it's come small. to me. It's a small. Talking about it's a small. I'm not again. We're not doing all that. anyway. Give me your. Your Starbucks order. Well, well, you go to before the Starbucks. What do you order? Oh, geez. Now, look, I'll, I'll give you a little backstory. I wasn't a huge coffee drinker until I started started dating my girl, and she she works as a barista. She is a coffee savant. Oh, knows everything so you're a about snob it. now. Oh, you're a snob now. Please. She 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 knows it all. You know, um, she does not like Starbucks because it's the big corporation. Doesn't think their coffee is that good. So throw out that hot take from her. Um, so we don't we don't go often. <laughs> But when we go, she is crafted. I didn't know all the names. I don't know what the I don't know what the order, bro. It's it's like one of those things where I'll stand behind her at the counter and she'll order my drink when we go get coffee. Right, you know? exactly. That that's how that goes. But um, if I if I be, if I correct on this one, I think it's a brown sugar shaken oat milk espresso, something like that. Real oh, nice. Wow. I think it's a, it might be a seasonal thing. I don't know, but that that's what I get when I go to Starbucks. Say that again. A what? A brown sugar shaken oatmeal espresso, oat milk espresso, something like that. Nice. I might try it. I'm, I use this time y'all try this stuff out. When y'all put it in Discord, you put your your, your what your coffee order. Man, I might try it. It sounds good to try it. Mine's is very simple. Upside down caramel macchiato. Oh, gas, gas. Simple. Ups- upside down makes it fancy for me. As fancy as I get. Upside down caramel macchiato. I'm out of it. Uh, so put it in the in the chat. Yours. Your coffee order. I'm going up these stairs. It's a bunch of flights. I'm kind of out of breath right now. I'll tell you it's coming live, man. I'm live right now. See, in the studio. You get to relax. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm in the stairs. You know what I mean? So, um, that's, 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 that's what I'm, I want to see. But before I get out of here, see, impromptu thing really quick. I got to give some flowers. And as I'm talking, I'm gaining my breath. I got to give some flowers to a person who deserves flowers. I think that a lot of times people don't, and especially men, people don't give men don't give each other flowers when it's deserved. Agreed. Agreed. My my good friend Yale, she had some personal information with me on yesterday, and I want to give him his flowers, and I want to do it personally. I want to do it publicly, where everybody can hear. So, brother, I'm proud of you, uh, and I wish you all the success that I know is forthcoming. You know what I mean? So, big deal. That's a really big deal. And I'm really proud of him. And I want to make sure he hears that and everybody will listen. I ain't trying to end on the sappy note. But I just want to give people their flowers, man. So, if you have a brother, brother, he's your real brother, brother, he's your, your, your best friend or whatever, man, give him some flowers if he deserves it. And even if he don't, man, tell him something good about himself, too, man. That's all I got for the show, please. We check y'all out tomorrow.